What is up, YouTube? My name is Zach Ontiveros. I am a patent agent, aerospace engineer, and your patent bar tutor. Today, we're gonna to be talking about 35 USC 102, which is the section of the United States Code that defines what prior art is in the world of patent law. Before we dive in, I wanna remind you all that you can hop over to patentexamprep.com where you can get access to over 400 patent bar flashcards that I wrote myself as well as a PDF of all of my type notes on patent exam topics. You can also request one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me or a consultation if you just want 50 minutes with me to kind of pick my brain on some topics. So hop on over and I'm sure you'll find some material that will be helpful for you during your studies. So you might have heard of this term AIA or the America Invents Act, which was phased in over the course of a couple years, but ultimately was implemented in the United States Code in 2013. So prior to 2013, we had a system in the United States that was a first to invent or first to conceived system, which was pretty difficult to determine who actually came up with the invention first. It wasn't necessarily who filed their invention at the patent office first. The America Invents Act changed all of that. And after 2013, we now have a first to file system. So it doesn't matter if I came up with the invention before you, if you got to the patent office first, you technically have more of a right to patent protection than I do. So we're gonna dive into that. Today, since we're operating in AIA land, the overwhelming majority of the questions on the patent bar exam are going to be AIA questions. It's not gonna be, who conceived of the invention first, it's going to be who got to the patent office first. But through the lens of the new updated 35 USC 102, which we're about to dive into, not the old. So let's keep that in mind here. If you go online, there are some old patent bar exams from the early 2000s that the USPTO has published. I would not recommend you use those to study because that is through the lens of the old law the old 35 USC 102, which is not applicable to the law today and it is not what is tested uh, mostly on the exam. So let's dive into it. All right, let's take a look at my screen here. So I have taken the new law, the 35 USC 102, and I've put it here on the screen. And you'll see below it, I write a little summary that kind of just gives you a snapshot idea of what this is saying. So let's read the first section. So 35 USC 102A talks about novelty, and this is what defines prior art, once again. So a person shall be entitled to a patent unless the claimed invention was patented, described in a printed publication, or in public use, on sale, or otherwise available to the public before the effective filing date of the claimed invention. Whoa, okay, what did we just read? Let's summarize this. This is anything before the applicant's filing date anywhere in the world is prior art. Okay, anything, anywhere, anything, anywhere is prior art. However, if you look overseas, let's say that we're looking at a Japanese patent application, it is its publication date, the date that it becomes available to the general public, that is its prior art date not its filing date in Japan, okay? So we're gonna to get to the next section here where we look at just US applications. But this is saying anything, anywhere in the world when it became public, when it became publicly available, not the date it was filed in a foreign office, the date it became publicly available. Okay, moving to section two, so that was 35 USC 102A1. I'm gonna get rid of the 35 USC when I refer to these next sections now. So that was 102A1. Let's look at 102A2 now. So once again, we have this preamble, a person shall be entitled to a patent unless, right? So this is what's defining the prior art. The claimed invention was described in a patent issued under section 151 or in an application for patent published or deemed published under section 122B in which the patent or application, as the case may be, names another inventor and was effectively filed before the effective filing date of the claimed invention. What on earth did I just read once again? This is very confusing at the start. I have no idea what I'm reading. Okay, let's break this down. This is not complicated, okay? So we are just looking at US applications 
and PCT applications that designate the United States. One thing to remember here is that nowadays, when you file a PCT application, even in a foreign office, it automatically designates the United States. Okay, so this is a little little quirk here with, with patent law. So let's let's break it down. So this expands 102A1. Remember, 102A1 says anything anywhere in the world as of the date it became public. Okay, so things can be filed in foreign offices though well before they become publicly available. Or in the United States, you can file a patent application and then it publishes 18 months later, about 18 months. So this expands that and says not only are some references prior art, but some of them are prior art even before they become public. So this is expanding the breadth, expanding the scope of what can be prior art, but just for some cases, just US patent applications and PCTs that designate the United States. Okay, let's look at this. So it expands A1, it further broadens prior art to include US patents, US publications, or published PCTs that designate the United States with an effective filing date prior to the applicant's filing date. All right, Zach, what the heck are you talking about? What does this mean? Let's break it down. Let's make this easy. Patent law does not have to be hard. I know that people get scared when, when we talk about law, when we talk about regulations, when we talk about rules, but it's digestible. It's here on the paper and you are capable of learning this. You are capable of being able to parse through this and understand. So let's do this together. All right, let's take an example. Let's say my competitor files a patent application on January 1st. I file a patent application on February 1st, both in the United States. Their patent application publishes 18 months later, so in about June, July, the following year, okay? So if we look at it through the lens of A1, we technically do not count that as prior art, right? It became publicly available about 17 months later than I filed. So we're sitting happy thinking, no, uh, this is not prior art under 35 U.S.C. 102. Well, that's correct. Under A1, it is not because it became publicly available after you filed. However, there's A2. And A2 says that it becomes prior art as of its effective filing date. So if we look right here, dot, 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 as the case may be, names another inventor, so it's from someone else, and was effectively filed before my effective filing date. That is true. It was filed on January 1st. I filed mine on February 1st. But this is for US applications, okay? Let's take a different example. Let's say that my competitor filed only in Japan, nowhere else. They just filed in Japan on January 1st. I file in the US on January 2nd, one day after them. Okay, so I am later than them. Even though it's one day, I'm later than them. Their application publishes, I don't know what the publication date is in Japan, but let's just say 18 months. It publishes 18 months later during prosecution of my application at the US Patent Office. The Patent Office, they make mistakes. Any system that has humans makes mistakes. The Patent Office hits me with a rejection and says, this is rejected. Uh, under 35 USC 102A2 uh, because it was filed before you. Well, I get to rebut the patent office and say, whoa, 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 whoa. 102A2 only applies to US applications and PCTs that designate the United States. This is a Japanese patent application. This is not a US application, it's not a PCT. And so this Japanese application can only be prior art under A1. And what does A1 say? It's prior art as of the date it publishes. So if it publishes after I filed in the US Patent Office, it's not prior art. It cannot be used against you, okay? Now let's take that same scenario, but switch it up a little bit. Let's say that our competitor files in Japan on January 1st, and they file a PCT on January 1st that designates the United States. I file my application in the United States on January 2nd, one day later. During prosecution, the PCT publishes. 
and the patent office hits me with a 102A2 rejection. And they say, this is a PCT whose effective filing date is January 1st, and this designates the United States. We are rejecting your application because it is one day before yours, and it reads on your, on your uh, invention. So let's talk about what prior art is. Prior art can be anything. It can be a YouTube video, it can be a manuscript, it can be a painting on a cave wall from 5,000 years ago. For example, if I wanna get a patent on a new type of engine, right? An engine in a car. Pretty much everything out there that's related to engines, whether it's automotive or aircraft or lawnmowers, can technically be prior art it may read on my invention. So we have explained 35 USC 102 A1 and A2. Recap, what is A1? A1 is anything, anywhere in the world as of its publication date, okay? 102 A2, it expands it a little bit, but just in the realm of the United States and PCTs that designate the United States, and it says that things can be prior art as of their effective filing date, which can be well before their publication date. And so it scoots their priority date back and it may scoot it so far back that it actually beats your filing date and can indeed count as prior art against you. There is a second section of 35 USC 102. So remember, there's 102A with these sub bullets one and two, and then there's 102B with multiple sub bullets. So let's dive into this. These are the exceptions. So this is saying, all right, so 102A, one and two, is defining the entire world of prior art, right? 102B says, okay, but there are some exceptions in that realm that was just defined under 102A. So 102B1, Disclosures made one year or less before the effective filing date of the claimed invention. So a disclosure made one year or less before the effective filing date of a claimed invention shall not be prior art under A1 if the disclosure was made by the inventor, a joint inventor, or by someone else who obtained the subject matter directly or indirectly from the inventor or joint inventor. That's a lot of words. Okay, let's make this easy again. Once again, patent law does not have to be hard. The summary, it is not prior art if the inventor themselves talked about it within the past year. Also though, it's not prior art if it was disclosed directly or indirectly by someone else who received that information from the inventor. What is a real world scenario here? Let's say that I am emailing back and forth with my patent attorney and I've got this great idea and I mistakenly CC my arch nemesis, okay? I CC this person, it was a complete mistake. They received this information from the inventor. I technically still have a right to file my application within 12 months, within a year. So this is something that's really important. Let's say that you go to a conference and you present on a paper and you talk about all of these amazing things you've been working on and then you realize, oh my gosh, none of this is protected. This is really important. This is a great idea. I've been getting so much positive feedback at this conference. I really should protect this. Well, you already disclosed it. However, you technically have 12 months to file on it since your public disclosure. This is not a good practice. I highly, highly encourage you if you or someone you know or whenever you start practicing is going to present, do not make it an afterthought. Even if it's an hour before the presentation, take their presentation, take their PowerPoint slides, put a cover sheet on it and file it as a rushed provisional at the patent office to just secure your filing date so that you don't have to go through any red tape at the patent office proving that you filed this application within 12 months of uh, your disclosure. All right, let's look at this next part of 102. So it's 102B1B. So once again, we have the preamble. A disclosure made one year or less before the effective filing date of a claimed invention is not prior art to the claimed invention under A1 if the subject matter disclosed had, before such disclosure, 
been publicly disclosed by the inventor or joint inventor or another who obtained the subject matter. This is what's called an intervening disclosure. So let's say that I disclose my invention in a YouTube video and it gets three views and that's it, but it's still in the public domain. Okay. It's not on private. It's in the public domain. And then six months later, my competitor, does the exact same thing, but not a YouTube video. They make a big deal of it at a conference and they announce it. Well, technically I have the right to file a patent application on my invention if the disclosure is less than 12 months prior. So if we're at the six month mark, I have another six months. You probably wanna do it sooner, but technically you have another six months to file. And so what this is saying is if there is an intervening disclosure it doesn't count as prior art against you if you disclosed before them, but still no greater than 12 months before your filing date. So it can't be older than a year, all right? So let's once again clear up this difference between B1A and B1B. B1A is saying your own disclosure is not prior art against you if it's in the past 12 months. B1B is saying someone else's disclosure is not prior art against you if you disclosed before them, but still within the past 12 months. Okay, awesome. Let's jump to the next section. And this is the last part of 102. So we have 102, B2, A, B, C. Let's walk through it. This one's a little bit trickier, but once again, patent law doesn't have to be hard. Let's make this easy. So exceptions, B2, disclosures appearing in applications and patents. A disclosure shall not be prior art to a claimed invention under subsection A2. So pause, the previous one, B1 and B2 was under A1. So those are the exceptions under A1. Stop, what's A1? A1 is anything, anywhere in the world as of its publication date, as of the date it became publicly available. All right, so we just looked at the exceptions. What are the exceptions to A1? It's not prior art if it's your own disclosure in the past 12 months, or it's an intervening disclosure. It's someone else's disclosure, so long as you disclosed before them still within the past 12 months of your filing date. Okay, that should be all cleared up, and if it's not, please rewind and rewatch that section of the video. Now we're gonna hop into the exceptions under A2. What is A2? It takes A1 and it expands it by pushing back that prior art date from the date US applications and PCTs that designate the US pushes the prior art date back from their publication date to the date they were effectively filed. Okay, so now let's look at the exceptions for it. A disclosure shall not be prior art to a claimed invention under A2 if the subject matter disclosed was obtained directly or indirectly from the inventor or joint inventor. Let's look at the summary. The disclosure is not prior art if it's the inventor's own work, was disclosed by a third party, and is deemed published in a U.S. patent, U.S. publication, or WIPO published application. What is WIPO? World Intellectual Property Organization, which is essentially a PCT application. All right, what does this mean? So a disclosure is not prior art to your invention under A2 if the, the subject matter in that patent publication or published PCT is the inventor's own work. So if the inventor filed a separate patent application that is very similar, very similar technology, and they're the inventor, it can't be used against them. Let's look at 102B2B, which addresses 102A2. And what's under A2? US patents, publications, and PCTs that designate the United States. Okay, so B2B. A disclosure shall not be prior art to a claimed invention under A2 if the subject matter disclosed had, before such subject matter was effectively filed under A2, been disclosed by the inventor, a joint inventor, or someone else who got the information from them. Okay, what does that even mean? So someone can still file an application even if there's a previous disclosure from someone else. 
So let's say that I'm the inventor and I go and make a YouTube video about my whole invention. My competitor goes and files a month later on something very, very similar that my YouTube video is likely prior art to their invention. Their patent publication can't count as prior art against you if you can prove to the patent office that you disclosed all of that material before they filed. So you give them the, you know, you give them the link to the YouTube video and you say, hey, uh, I already disclosed all of this uh, beforehand. That can technically disqualify the intervening art. Let's look at B2C. So once again, we have the preamble, a disclosure shall not be prior art to an invention under A2, US patents, US publications, and PCTs, if the subject matter disclosed and the claimed invention, not later than the effective filing date of the claimed invention, were owned by the same person or subject to an obligation of assignment to the same person. Okay, so this disqualifies subject matter disclosed in a US patent publication or PCT as prior art if the subject matter disclosed and the claimed invention were owned by or assigned to the same person or entity. So either the same solo inventor who had multiple patents or different inventors in a company that all assign it to the same company. It's the same assignee, okay? However, you can still be rejected under a one. Let's say that I work at a company and I file a provisional patent application. At the 12 month mark, I file a non-provisional patent application and I expect it to publish about six months later. Because remember, US applications typically publish about 18 months from their earliest effective filing date. So provisional, 12 months later, non-provisional, and then to get to that 18 month mark, six months, okay? So we file that non-provisional. We're at the 12 month mark and the engineers come to me and say, hey, we have another pretty similar idea, but it's slightly different. Can we file it? And I say, yeah, let's do it, right? So under A2, even though this other application's effective filing date is 12 months earlier, it's assigned to the same entity and it's not published yet. So I can file another application and it is not prior art against me. However, it can be prior art once it publishes. So even though I own it, or even though it's assigned to the same company, you can actually shoot yourself in the foot by allowing applications to publish before you file enough of your applications on that technology before the publication date, or else it can count as prior art against you. Let's hop into some sample questions to understand how the patent bar might ask you about 35 USC 102. So let's look at this first sample question. You file a non-provisional patent application in the United States for your client on January 9th, 2021. On December 6th, 2021, the examiner issues a rejection under 102, citing a French publication which published on November 7th, 2020. Is the rejection proper? And if so, is it proper under 102A1 or 102A2? Okay. Patent law is about dates, 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 dates. So what we're gonna try to do is sift through this and figure out what these dates are. I filed a non-provisional patent application on January 9th, 2021, okay? On December 6th, the examiner issues a rejection. I don't really care the date that they uh, issued this rejection. What I care about is the prior art that they are comparing my application to. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of strike December 6th out of my mind. I don't need that date. It's not important in the context of this question. So they rejected it though under 102, citing a French publication. Okay, a French publication. So we're not talking about a US patent, a US publication, or a published PCT that designates the United States. So right away my brain goes to, okay, this is under 102A1, anything, anywhere in the world. 102A2 relates to US patents, US publications, and PCTs that designate the United States. So under A1, so we have half the question answered. It's under 102A1. Now we have to determine, is it a proper rejection? So under A1 is a foreign application, patent application, prior art as of its filing date or its publication date? It's publication date, right? So let's look under, let's look at this. 
it published November 7th, 2020. Is November 7th, 2020 earlier than January 9th, 2021? Yes. But Zach, this is a non-provisional application that was filed on January 9th, 2021. So it had to rely on a provisional application 12 months prior, which would mean January 9th, 2020 is the effective filing date, which beats the publication date of the French patent. So it shouldn't be prior, right? Wrong. This question says nothing about a provisional application. It says nothing about claiming priority to a provisional application. So you cannot assume, never ever assume information that is not there in the question stem. You can file a non-provisional application without claiming priority to a provisional. It's very well possible. You don't have to do a provisional. You can jump straight to a non-provisional. So in my mind reading this, my earliest filing date is January 9th, 2021. The French application was published November 7th, 2020 before my filing date. Therefore, it is a proper rejection under 35 USC 102A1. And now I have to argue against it or amend my claims. Okay, next question. You file a non-provisional patent application in the United States for your client on January 9th, 2021. Same date. Isn't that nifty? On December 6, 2021, the examiner issues a rejection under 102, citing a Korean patent application, which was filed on May 17th, 2020 and published on March 6th, 2021. Is the rejection proper? And if so, is it proper under 102A1 or 2? Okay, this is very similar to the last question, but we have a bit more information on this one. This one is giving us a foreign filing date and publication date. The last one just gave us a publication date. So once again, let's think, okay, this is a Korean application. It doesn't mention a PCT. So what do we think of under 102A1 and A2? A2 is US patents, US publications, and published PCTs that designate the United States. Do you see that when we're looking at this prior art? No, we see a Korean patent application that publishes, that's all we see. So we are viewing this through the lens of A1. Anything, anywhere in the world, as of the date it became public, okay? When did it become public? It's publication date, which is March 6th, 2021. So I do not care about May 17th, 2020. That has no relevance to this discussion. So March 6, 2021, that is when it becomes prior art. When is my filing date? January 9th, 2021. Is my filing date before the date that that reference becomes prior art? Yes, by about three months, okay? So it is not prior art. The examiner got it wrong and that can happen. I've dealt with that before where an examiner messed up and you just say, hey, FYI, this is not prior art under 102A1 for these reasons. You were looking at the filing date. It's the publication date, it's not prior art. Next question. You file a provisional patent application in the United States for your client on February 6, 2020. You subsequently file a non-provisional application on February 1st, 2019. On March 23rd, 2020, the examiner issues a rejection under 35 USC 102, citing a Chinese patent application, which was filed on May 17th, 2017, and published on March 6, 2018. Is the rejection proper, and if so, is it proper under 102A1 or 2? Okay, that was a lot. And this is very normal for patent bar questions. You're just like, man, what did I read? I just got like seven different dates. What is important is to sift through it and determine what is relevant. What is actually important? So let's do that right now. We are going to mark up this question. You're not gonna be able to really do this on the patent bar because it is on the computer screen, but you should do this when you're practicing because it gives you kind of the ability to, to do it mentally as well, where you're scratching out in your head dates that don't matter. Let's look at this. You file a provisional patent application in the US for your client on February 2nd, 2018. You file a non-provisional application on February 1st, 2019. So I may have mistyped this here. Let's say that it properly claims priority to the provisional, okay? So this February 1st, 2019, it doesn't really matter. It is not our earliest effective filing date. Our earliest effective filing date is February 2nd, 2018. That is the date we got to the patent office. 
On March 23rd, 2020, the examiner issues a rejection. I don't care when they issue this rejection. I am just comparing this to the prior art. So, nope, doesn't matter. They cite a Chinese patent application, which was filed on May 17th, 2017 and published on March 16th, 2018. Okay, we are looking at 35 USC 102. Is it A1 or A2? It does this involve a U.S. patent, U.S. publication, or PCT that designates the United States in terms of the prior art? No, it's just a Chinese patent application. So do we care when it was filed? No, we just care about the date it became publicly available. These are the two dates we're comparing. Which one is earlier? Ours. Our date is earlier, February 2nd, 2018, assuming that the non-provisional properly claimed priority to the provisional. And once again, I messed up the question. I accidentally didn't type it, but the non-provisional does claim priority to the provisional. So the rejection is improper and it's improper under A1 because once again, A2, U.S. patents, U.S. publications, and PCTs that designate the United States. All right, we've got two more questions, so bear with me. You file a provisional patent application in the U.S. for your client on June 8, 2021. On Friday, June 7, 2022, the next season of your favorite show is released, and you forget to file the non-provisional application. You realize your mistake on Sunday, June 9, 2022. Is it too late to receive the benefit of the provisional application's filing date? Hmm, okay. This is a little bit of a different question from 102, but it's important because we think of prior art in terms of what's your effective filing date. If you're too late filing the non-provisional, you can't claim priority back to the provisional. So let's figure out if we can indeed secure our filing date of the provisional's date, which is June 8, 2021. Let's see. So we file this provisional on June 8th, 2021. We have 12 months. We have until June 8th, 2022 to file this, technically. However, any time you see a patent bar question include a day of the week, pay attention, pay attention. This is so important because look, what is June 8th, 2022? It's a Saturday. And do you know what's not open on Saturdays? The United States government. <laughs> so the United States Patent Office is closed on weekends and federal holidays, and you are technically allowed to file on the next available business day and still be allowed to secure that filing date. So you mess it up and you don't file it on Friday. You realize it on June 9th. Technically, it's one day late. However, this is a weekend. June 9th is a Sunday. So you are allowed to file it on June 10th, which is the next business day. So it's not too late. You are able to receive the benefit as long as you get that application in. Last question. This is kind of a long one. You file a provisional patent application in the U.S. for your client on February 2nd, 2018. You subsequently file a non-provisional application on February 1st, 2019. On March 23rd, 2020, the examiner issues a rejection under 35 USC 102, citing a PCT patent application which published on May 17th, 2018 and claimed priority to a Brazilian patent application filed on May 23rd, 2018. Is the rejection proper? And if so, is it proper under 102A1 or A2? Let's figure out what is the date that this counts as prior art under A1 and A2, if it does count as prior art at all. Let's see, so let's look at A1. What is A1? Anything, anywhere in the world, as of the date it becomes publicly available. When did this become publicly available? Let's see, the citing a PCT which published on May 17th, 2018. May 17, 2018. Okay, A2. Does this even qualify under A2? Do we have a US patent, US publication, or published PCT that designates the United States? It says citing a PCT application which published, and we can assume it designates the United States because every PCT designates the United States now. Under A2, it's the earliest effective filing date of a published PCT. So this published PCT claims priority to a Brazilian patent application that was filed on May 3rd, 2018, 14 days prior right? 
So is this rejection proper? So it says right here, let's figure out when our filing date is. You file a provisional patent application in the US for your client on February 2nd, 2018. You subsequently file a non-provisional application on February 1st, 2019. On March 23rd, don't really care about that date, what the examiner's doing. So if it's effectively claims priority, which once again, I'm sorry, I forgot to add that, but if it effectively claims priority to the provisional, our earliest effective filing date is indeed February 2nd, 2018. So we're comparing these dates. So technically, no, it's not prior art, right? Our filing date is February 2nd, 2018, and it's not prior art under A1 or A2 because it's after us. All right, let's change something. Let's say that instead of February, this is May 12th, 2018. Is it prior art? Well, yes. So the examiner could issue a rejection under A2. The earliest one would be under A2. May 3rd, oops, sorry, that was messy. May 3rd would be used against us, and May 3rd is before May 12th, so it, the rejection would be proper, even though it was a Brazilian application that the PCT stemmed from. It doesn't matter. Under A2, it's U.S. patents, U.S. publications, and PCTs that designate the United States. Thank you, everyone. I know this is kind of a long video, but the patent bar has a lot of material, and this is just scratching the surface of what is in the exam. So I want to remind you all that you can hop over to patentexamprep.com where you can get access to over 400 patent bar flashcards that I wrote myself. You can also get access to a PDF of all of my notes that I've typed up on a lot of the topics that are in the patent bar exam. You can also request one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me and consultations, as well as a few other things on my website. So please feel free to hop over and support the channel by liking or subscribing if you found this content helpful. I'm going to be making many more videos on patent bar topics, patent bar uh, sample questions, um, and I, I really hope you follow along on this journey, and best of luck, you're going to pass this.